Here's part three of Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana. I recently listened back to a lot of my old videos and my apologies, I talk so loud it sounds like I'm screaming into the mic. So if your eardrums were busted by KG's voice, you're entitled to legal compensation. Back to the story. So the story does flick back and forth to present time to Lori and Abby's childhood when Pete was still alive. And just for your awareness, it gets pretty PG-13 and rated R at some times, which is why I docked the book some points for the, the plot. It gets pretty gnarly, but what's a horror book without a little bit of it? So at this point, we flick back to a first flashback, and this is when Pete was still alive. Pete was 10, Lori was 12, and Abby was 14 years old. And behind their family home was woods. And if you go pretty far to the woods, there's a small little cliff and a creek and a little rope swing that the girls would go out to every single summer, swing off the rope swing, and land in the deep water. It was their little private swimming hole. So Pete really went out to this swimming hole because he was afraid of the cliffs. But on this particular summer day, he decided to chase after Lori and Abby and go swim with them. He was working up the courage to get on the rope swing and jump into the water, but he was really afraid of the drop. And if you grew up with siblings, you understand we bully each other. Siblings are mean to each other. So Pete being the youngest, he was picked on frequently by Lori and Abby on this particular day. Pete wanted to go on the rope swing, and Abby's like, Lori, push Pete into the water. Push him off the cliff. Get him. Get him, Lori. And Lori, recognizing Pete was actually, like, shaking and scared from the height, she's like, nah, fam, I'm not gonna do that to Pete. He doesn't deserve that. And this was the first time Lori had ever stood up for Pete because Lori was the one that used to pick on Pete all the time. So at this particular flashback was the first time Pete was like, oh, Lori actually cares about me. I can trust her. And this speaks volumes for what's going to unfold further into the books. Now we're back to present time on the hike. So Abby was thinking to herself, why doesn't Lori bring her boyfriend around? Is she embarrassed for me to be seen by him? And what if they get married? Lori will be taken away by her boyfriend and they won't want to see me anymore. That can't happen because I want Lori all to myself. I need my sissy and she can't leave me alone. What am I gonna do? I know I can be a bit much sometimes, but I can't be left alone. And she doesn't deserve anybody else but me. So Abby, secretly in her mind, was starting to work herself up into a bit of an anger towards this. Which is a bit out of character for Abby, because typically she can be in high spirits until she starts throwing a fit. So Lori at this time is like, hey Abby, let's take a quick snack break real quick so you can take your medication. And Abby's like, no, no, I want to get to the fort and have my snack. Because during the hike, they have to go to Edmund's old house in order to pick up this key. And Lori's like, well, I don't know how much further this is going to be. You have to take your meds. And Abby, for the first time, looks at Lori with so much hatred and rage and says, fuck you, Lori, and takes off. Lori was taken aback. She's never heard her sister curse at her like this. I mean, yeah, Abby throws fits and she gets pretty angry sometimes, but this was different. So Lori caught up with Abby and she's like, listen, we can go have a snack at the fort, but first you need to take your medication and then we can go eat. So after much fighting, Abby obliged and she did take her medication and they ended up making it to Edmund's old house, which ended up being a moldy, dilapidated shack in the middle of nowhere. So Edmund lived in a little community of people who also lived in tiny little shacks off the grid. So the old shack that Edmund used to live in was so gross, she didn't want to let Abby inside and eat in there. It was full of mold, rat droppings. The shack was falling apart, and since this was the old home of a notorious serial killer, she didn't think it was quite appropriate to have Abby eat food in here. 
Lori was on a mission to find this key. So she told Abby, hey, go it, go eat your food outside. I'll be right back. And she started hunting around this tiny little shack to find this key. She didn't know what she was looking for. She didn't know what the key looked like. She just knew she needed to find the key for the river man. Abby went to eat outside and that's where she found a trap door hidden on the floor of the shack. And the smell that came from this trap door was awful. It smelled like rot, death, something was decaying down there. And Abby, Abby, I'm Lori made her descent down the creaky little makeshift ladder down to this dirt floor, this secret little room. And that's where she found the decaying final victim of Edmund Cox. Lori was freaked out. The smell was so intense. The parasites in there, awful. Rats were eating on the decaying body. Cockroaches were everywhere. It was foul. But where was the key? Where was the hints where she could find the key?